Hallelujah. Yahweh Barak, all Ko Yisrael, those that are, that, that are here with us at Teshua, and those that are scattered abroad. Yahweh Barak, you all. We send Titus and Yahshua HaMashiach, for he is our deliverance, Yisrael. As Cain was reading, it says that the wicked shall be consumed. How shall it be consumed, Yisrael? It shall be by the call or by the voice of Almighty Yahweh. For truly his voice is a consuming ish. It's a consuming fire. It consumes anything that is not like him. Any kind of filth, any kind of dross. Even the Torah talks about the brimstone. I will talk about that a little bit tonight. We will dab a little here, a little there in the Torah. But it will all incommodate to what? Truth. It shall be truth, Israel. But it talks about even the brimstone being the very breath of Almighty Yahweh. And what does the brimstone do? What does the fire do? It consumes. It burns. There's nothing left, not even ashes, when the fire of Yahweh goes forth. Nothing is left, Israel. So should we desire the Torah of Almighty Yahweh to burn within our bosom? That it consumes the dross? That there isn't any kind of resemblance of anything unclean in our left? In our minds, in our hearts, Yisrael, yeah. that we may present our bodies yeah. a living offering unto Almighty Yahweh, yeah. pure. Yeah. It must be pure, yeah. that it may be acceptable mm -hmm. unto Him. Yeah. For truly Yahweh, He divides the flame of the fire, or his, even His breath, Yisrael, yeah. what He speaks. Yeah. Should not we, Yisrael, yeah, as our, as a hope? As we speak the Torah, as we preach, as we teach, should not we rightfully divide the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, His Word? Should not we be skillful? Don't you know that Yahweh knows what He is doing when He speaks into the house, Israel? He doesn't send His judgment or His fire or His ish as a, as a miss. He doesn't miss, Israel. He knows what He speaks. Many times we want to try to deflect the flame or the fire or the word of Almighty Yahweh when we should consume it. We should want the judgments of Almighty Yahweh. We should pray for the judgments of Almighty Yahweh. Not in his vehement anger, Yisrael, but that the Torah of his fire will continue to burn, to cleanse, and to purify. Hallelujah, Yahweh. I want to again, in Shema of Exodus chapter 9, verse 13. Hallelujah. Somewhat taking us back to the time of Mizraim. The Torah does describe Egypt or Mizraim as a furnace or the iron furnace. And as I have taught on this for the past few weeks, Israel, Yahweh, we understand and we know by now that the fire or the trials are of Almighty Yahweh. He spoke that I have chosen you in the fire of affliction. Is that not right, Yisrael? So what was the purpose of Yisrael, of the chosen of Almighty Yahweh, being in Mizraim or Egypt? Are we not in a type of Egypt in this hour, Yisrael? Don't you know Yahweh will lead us by his Nabi, by his messengers? He will have men to speak his Torah, his Mishvah, and it shall lead and guide Yisrael. What? Through the fire. Through Egypt. Through Mizraim. Through this world. Through the heartache. Through the pain. Yahweh shall lead his people by his Torah. It is his ish, it is his fire, Yisrael. That not only consumes, but it also preserves Yisrael. It says in Exodus Shema chapter 9 verse 13. And Yahweh said unto Moshe, rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh and say to him, thus says Yahweh, the sovereign ruler of the Hebrews of Israel, let my people go that they may serve me. The Torah of Yahweh is proclaiming even unto us in this generation, Israel, that we let go. That we allow the fire of Yahweh to 
purge us, to consume us. Why? That we may let go. That we may allow our voices and the praises that he is worthy and that is due to his name, Israel, to rise up with a voice of, of, a voice of triumph, of victory, Teshua and Yahshua. See, we tend to hold back, Israel. Not only does this talk about then, but it's also talking about the now, Israel. There is still yet a spirit of Pharaoh that tries to take captivity over the blessings, over the Torah, over the offerings of fire unto Almighty Yahweh. And he's not going to allow it, Israel. He's not going to allow it. Even though the Torah speaks as Yahweh places the hook in the jaw of the kings, of the princes. Why do you think Yahweh does that? When you are fishing, don't you use a hook for what? To catch the fish. Not only does the hook hook the fish by the jaw, but it also guides the fish. The rod subdues the fish, and you use the line and that hook to bring it in. So once that fish is on that hook, it's got to be right. The fish will not come off, Israel. The world is not going to escape the judgment of Almighty Yahweh, nor is Israel going to escape the judgment of Almighty Yahweh. So allow Yahweh to live by his Torah, by his Mishvah, Yisrael. Hallelujah. That he not have to force us as he forced Pharaoh. Did not force Pharaoh's hand. He proclaimed that he hardened the heart of Pharaoh even the more. Do we want that, Yisrael? Do we want Yahweh to harden our heart like he hardened Pharaoh's heart? Why did he do that? What was the purpose? To bring him honor? To bring him praise? That he may boast that I am the one that have brought Yisrael out of the furnace? Out of the iron furnace? You know, there's no way we can save ourselves, Yisrael. It took the mishvah of Yahweh. It took Yahshua HaMashiach to bring us out, Yisrael. Hallelujah. But still, in our minds and our lives, if we allow it, Israel, the furnace of this trial, this spirit of Pharaoh, of Mizraim, it will hold us. It will keep us. It will not allow the Teshua or the voice of victory to go forth from our bosom, Israel. That's all right. In the morning, we should barak Yahweh. Yeah. Throughout the day, his praises shall not, it shouldn't cease out of our mouths, Israel. Verse 14, he says, for I will at this time send all my plagues upon your heart, upon your mind, upon the pinnacle of your thoughts, your beliefs, your aspirations, and upon your servants and your people, that you may know that there is none like me in all the earth. Do we have that knowledge, Israel? Do we have that? Do we know there's none like Almighty Yahweh? For now I will stretch out my hand. I brought Yahweh for his hand. That I may smite you and your people with pestilence. And you shall be cut off from the earth. And in every deed of this cause I have raised you up. For to show you my power. And that my name may be declared throughout the earth. Did you hear Yahweh speaking? Did he not raise Pharaoh up? Was not Pharaoh even a type of anointed of Almighty Yahweh? He gave him his power. He gave him his rule for a season. But yet it is Yahweh that brings his honor, that declares unto all the, all the world his power, Yisrael. Verse 17. As yet, Exalt yourself, you yourself, against my people, that you will not let them go, O Pharaoh. Behold, tomorrow about this time, I will cause to rain a very grievous hail. Yes. Hail, stone, falling from the Shemayims. This is one of the plays, the judgment, the fiery judgments of Almighty Yahweh as he speaks, Yisrael. Yes. Fire, his judgment, it consumes 
such as had not been in Egypt since the foundation thereof unto now. So in this we understand that Yahweh, he done a new thing, did he not, Yisrael? It has never been seen. The fire from the Shemayim, the brimstone, his voice being spoken as of this time that the judgment and his indignation will come upon Pharaoh and Mizraim. Did the time come in Israel that, we're, that we have never seen, that this world has never seen? Are we going to be able to stand? How shall we stand? There's an old proverb or slogan that says, you must fight fire with fire. That's true, Yisrael. In order for us to survive, we must abide in the fire of Almighty Yahweh. We must find our comfort and our refuge in his Torah, Yisrael. For it is our comfort. It is our refuge. It is our deliverance. Yahshua Hamashiach, the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Verse 19. He says, sin therefore now and gather your cattle, and all that you have in the field. What are we gathering, Israel? Are we making preparation for this time? Don't you understand this was not only a commandment unto Pharaoh, but also unto Israel? But that was in the land of Gosha. Was Gosha, was it touched by the fire in the nation of Almighty Yahweh? No, it was not. His people were in a safe haven, Israel. They were covered. They were protected. For upon every son of Adam and beast which shall be found in the field and shall not be brought home or be brought to its place of protection, it says that the hail or the fire or the cold, the voice of Yahweh shall come down upon them and they shall die. They shall perish. They shall be consumed, Yisrael. I desire this, Yisrael. I desire the consuming fire of Almighty Yahweh. I want it so that it will be shut up in my bones, that I cannot be still, that I cannot hold back. We should not hold back from Almighty Yahweh. We allow our flesh to hold back. We try to hide our sins from Almighty Yahweh, which we cannot hide that from him, Israel, for he sees all things. But we should desire the fire, the coal, the voice of Almighty Yahweh to speak. That we may be delivered. Verse 20. He that feared the word of Almighty Yahweh. Do we fear Yahweh tonight, Israel? Yeah. Among the servants of Pharaoh made his servants and his cattle to flee into their bayah. To flee into their houses, Israel. And he that regarded not, that did not regard the Torah, did not, did not regard the proclamation that went forth, and he that regarded not in the level, in the heart, the word of Almighty Yahweh, which left his servants and his cattle in the field, it says, continuing in verse 22. And Yahweh said to Moshe, stretch forth your hand toward the Shemayims, that there may be hell in all the land of Mizraim, upon the sons of Adam, upon the beasts, and upon every herb of the field throughout the land of Mizraim. So we see the fiery judgment, the indignation of Almighty Yahweh. It's not saving anyone that transgressed the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Only those that put their possessions, their cattle, their servants, whatever had they, to the house were preserved, Yisrael. What do we hold dear to our heart, Yisrael? What do we hold that is worth a price, that is precious to us, Israel. You got to hold it within your left. Yes. You must hide it within the deep place of your mind and of your heart, Israel, that it not be consumed. For there is a fire that is coming, Israel, and it shall test us. It will try us. Our imuna, where we stand on the foundations of Almighty Yahweh, it shall try us, Israel. So we must obey the Mishra, the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Every aspect of it. Every aspect, Israel. And upon beasts and upon every herb of the field. Now that's important too. Because even when the fire of the brimstone came down in Mizraim, it was at the time when the barley was beginning to bring forth its fruit. 
The wheat was young in the fields. This right, y'all. And what happened as I go on, I want to get too far ahead of myself, Israel, y'all, is that the barley was consumed because it was at the time of bringing forth fruit, Israel. Yahweh, he's not going to allow his people to come forth at the wrong time, Israel. He's going to protect us. He's going to hold us. And the time of his judgment and his indignation, Israel, shall be poured out. For he knows that we are weak, Israel. He knows there is so much we could bear. So what, did he, what does he allow, Israel? He allows us to grow, not too fast, not too slow, but at his own timing, Israel. And that's very important because as I read on, we're going to see that in the fields that the wheat was still yet preserved because its fruit did not come to flourish, Israel. So there's a process and there is a time for all of us to bring forth our fruit. What is the fruit, Israel? What is this fruit that I'm talking about? It is the praises unto Almighty Yahweh. It is more than just a voice, Israel, but it's that which come forth out of the land. And it must come full that we may present unto Yahweh a full offering of wheat at the time that we bring our offerings unto Israel, unto Jerusalem, unto Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Let me, let me go on, Israel. Verse 23. And it says, And Moshe stretched forth his rod toward the Shemayans. And Yahweh, he sent thunder, and he sent hell. If you were to look that up, Israel, the hell, that is his voice. That is his word being processed. That is his word going forth, Israel, as a consuming fire. And the fire, it rang alone among the ground. And Yahweh rang hell upon the land of Mizraim. As we think a little farther in the Torah, in the Mishra of Almighty Yahweh, do we recall Solomon, Gomorrah, Israel? Was it not consumed by the very word of Almighty Yahweh because of the sin and the iniquity? It even made, the stench of it made its way to the nostrils of Almighty Yahweh. This nation will not stand. This world will not stand, Israel. Yeah. It's filth. Yes. It, it uh, continuously justifies itself. Yes. It tramples the word of Yahweh and the dumb of Yahshua under its feet. Yes. And they think they're going to escape. Yes. No, they're not going to escape the judgment or this fire. This ish of Almighty Yahweh. And neither is Israel. Neither is Israel. We must continually search our left for the leaven, for the dross, for the impurities, Israel, or we shall be consumed in the fire of Almighty Yahweh. As I spoke last about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the furnace, if they were not ready, Israel, they would have been consumed in the fire. If we're not ready, we shall be consumed and the judgment, and in the fire of Almighty Yahweh. But rest assured, Israel, we shall be ready. Israel is going to be ready. Yahweh has given us everything that we need to move forward. No, he don't want us to take a step forward and three or four steps back, no. He wants us to march forward and continue to march and depress Israel until the mark of the high calling of Israel. Hallelujah. Verse 24. So there was hell and fire mingled with hell. So there were the stones. The fire was raining down. Not only was it consuming, but it was beating. It was breaking down everything. The, the word of Yahweh is also like a hammer, Yisrael. And it breaks even the hardest of stones, Yisrael. His word is a, also a battle axe. It said it was very grievous. It was very sore. It was a terrible thing to behold, to see at this time. Such as there was none like it in all the land of Egypt, since it had came a nation. Verse 25. And the hell smote throughout all the land of Mizraim, all that was in the field. Does it say all, Yisrael? Yes. Cold. So it smote everything that was in the field. Both the son of Adam... The beast and the hell smote every herb of the field 
and break every tree of the field. Yes, yes. And it says this, that only in the land of Gosha, hallelujah, hallelujah. only the land of Gosha hallelujah. was not touched, Israel. Yeah. Only the land of Gosha was preserved, Israel. Yeah. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Yeah. Let's abide in the land of Gosha. Yeah. Let us abide in the place that Yahweh has placed us in, Israel. Yeah. Let us not move out where Yahweh has placed us, no matter what is going on around us, no matter what we see with our physical eyes or hear with our physical ears, Yahweh, Yisrael, Yah. abide in the place, abide in Gosha, under the wings of Almighty Yahweh. Only in the land of Gosha, <coughs> Gosha where the children of Yisrael Yah were, were, was there no hell. There was no fire. There was no brimstone. And Pharaoh sent and called for Moshe and Aharon and said to them, I have sinned this time. Don't you see what the judgments of Yahweh would do? Even Pharaoh for a time. And I believe he was sincere. He was sitting, sensing or, or he was looking for a place for repentance. But did he find any Israel? Did Yahweh grant that unto him? No, he didn't. Neither did he grant that unto Cain, Yisrael. He said, for I have sinned this time. He said, Yahweh, he is Sadiq, he's righteous. And I and my people, we are wicked. Yes. Is that what it's going to take for us, Yisrael, yes. to confess our faults? Here we find a man that reigns supreme at this time. And yet even the judgment, him seeing the judgment of Almighty Yahweh, his servants being killed, the wealth of the land being wasted, and it brought him to a place of repentance before Almighty Yahweh. Is that what it's going to take for Yisrael? Yah? Are we in the place where Yahweh desires us to be? Are we in the land of Gosha? Or do we find ourselves tiptoeing out of the place where Yahweh desires us to be? We shall be consumed, Yisrael, Yah, by his judgment. We're not going to mock Yah and his mishvah, Yisrael, Yah. And not be consumed by his Torah. Amen. Verse 28. Pharaoh, he pleaded to entreat Yahweh. For it is enough that there be no more mighty thunderings and hail. Yeah. And I will let you go. And I shall, and you shall stay no longer. Did he let the people go? No, he didn't. Why? Because Yahweh yet hardened his heart once again. Or the heart of the king, they're in the hands of Almighty Yahweh, Yisrael. Yah. See, Yahweh, he knows how to divide his Torah, his Mishvah. He knows how to divide the flames of fire, Yisrael. Yah. So let us have total confidence in what he's doing, Yisrael. Yah. Let us not doubt Yahweh. Those that are listening to my video of live stream, don't doubt Almighty Yahweh and his Torah. And the things that happen in our lives, Yisrael Yah. It is for our learning. It is for to strengthen us. Yes. That we can stand the heat. That we can abide in the fire, the trial of Almighty Yahweh. Verse 29. And Moshe said to him, as soon as I am gone out of the city, I will spread abroad my hands unto Almighty Yahweh. And the thunder shall cease. Neither shall there be any more hell. That you may know. That the earth is Almighty Yahweh. Do we know that, Yisrael? Yah? Do we know that the, th the cattle upon the thousand hills, it all, belongs on, it all belongs to Almighty Yahweh? We are his prized possession. There's a song that comes to mind, have your own way, Yahweh. Have your own way. For you are the potter. And we are the clay. And we truly are clay before Almighty Yahweh. We are vessels that Yahweh is preparing by his Torah. He is forming us. He is making us into his image, Yisrael. Yah. Into the image of Yahshua HaMashiach. Without spot or blemish. But just as pottery is molded, it is shaping Yisrael, Yah, it has to go where? It must be tried. It has to be put in the furnaces, Israel. 
If there's anything in that piece of pottery or in that clay, any mire, sometimes the air bubbles are trapped. You, you must make sure all that's pressed out. I remember as a young child having projects in, in uh, school, in public school, where you made the clay, you made the pottery, whether it was a vase, a vase, or a cup, or whatever you want to do, actually. I, I, I recall making a, a little animal. But when it went through the fire and I got it back, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't all together, Israel. Why? Because I didn't take the time to make sure that the air bubbles were out, that the little pebbles and stuff like that are out, Israel. Yahweh, he's grooming Israel. He's pressing us. He's trying us. Those that can stand are going to stand. And those that will not stand will not stand, Israel. He's purging his house by his Torah, Israel, by his word, by his fire, by his ish, by the coals of fire. Hallelujah. Don't we see that, Israel, in the Torah, verse 30? But as for you and your servants, I know that you will not yet fear Yahweh, the Almighty. Even Moshe knew this. After all this judgment, after all what was seen by Pharaoh, he knew that they would not follow the Mishpah or the commandment of Yahweh to let Israel go. Verse 31. Getting to what I was talking about concerning the flax and the barley, the wheat. Verse 31. And the flax and the barley was smoked. Now that was a great loss, Israel. A great loss at this time. The flax, the barley, the grains that was needed for the feeding of the people. The animals, barley brings strength. It brings wealth to the body. It says, for the body, the barley was still yet in the ear. And the flax, it says, was in bud, verse 32. But the wheat and the rye, they were not smoked, for they were not grown up. They did not come to the full flourish at this time, Yisrael. So what is Yahweh doing, Yisrael? What is he doing? He's bringing us forth. He's allowing us to grow into maturity. That we may come forth as wheat. Not as hus. Because all you do at the hus and the threshing floor. But you know what the threshing floor, can you imagine what a threshing floor looks like? Let me, let me kind of describe that to you. It's a place where the wheat or the barley or whatever grains you may have, they beat them on the, flesh, the thrashing floor. They thrash them on the floor. Why? That the fruit will come forth. That the fruit will come forth, Israel. Yes, yes. And then it is easily separated. The wheat, the barley, the fruit is easily separated from the husk. They take the husk and it is burned, and the wheat is put into containers for storage, Israel. So let us not... As a people, resist Yahweh when he thrashes us on the floor. When he beats us, when he presses us, Yisrael. Because he's separating the husk from the wheat. It's another type of purification. It's a type of fire. It's a type of trial, Yisrael. And don't you know why the wheat lays there out of the husk? It is naked. It is no longer covered. Everything is exposed, Yisrael. Everything is exposed. So us as being the weak Israel, everything is exposed before Almighty Yahweh. We're not able to hide anything from him. In the trial, during the thrashing, or even in the fire, everything shall come forth. Everything. Everything comes forth in the fire, Israel. Verse 33. And Moshe, he went out of the city from Pharaoh and spread abroad his hands unto Almighty Yahweh. And the thunderings and the hell ceased. And the rain was not poured upon the earth. So as we look at Mizraim or Egypt, it is a dry, parched land. This land is burnt up, Israel. There's no wealth in this land, in this nation. The little wealth that was here is consumed. All we carry around, the people carry around, is just this fake notes of property or worth, Israel. There's a time coming and it's already being done where the money should be cast or burnt up. It's no, it's no value 
and the nations of the world. Look at the economies. I'm sure that we hear the news clippings on the radio or by the papers. Israel, it's being burned up. If we place our hope in monies or in wealth or in the world, Israel, we have all men most miserable. There are people that are miserable, Israel, because they put their, their trust in monies. They put their trust in things, Israel. There's only one thing we should put our trust in, and that is the ish. It's the fire. It's the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. That's what we should put our hopes in. We should lay up our treasures in the Shemayim with moth and rust cannot corrupt Israel. And it says in verse 34, And when Pharaoh saw that the rain and the hail and the thunderings were ceased, he sinned yet more. Did he have a hook in his jaw, Israel? Was not Yahweh driving him? That he may show before Israel his power? Did you know Yahweh would give people the nations? For, uh, for us, Israel, that we may be preserved and saved. Y'all shocked by Yahshua. It says he sinned yet more, verse 34, chapter 9, Shema. And hardened his heart. He and not only he, but his servants, his house. And the heart of Pharaoh was hardened. Neither will he let the children of Israel go as Yahweh has spoken by Moshe. So did Moshe know this before time? Don't you know Yahweh, he doesn't do anything unless it is revealed by his Nabi, by his messengers, Yisrael Yah. Moshe knew that this would happen. There's nothing that should happen, Yisrael Yah, that we should not be a brief of. That should tell you, Yisrael Yah, by surprise or by storm. For, Yah, for Yahweh's Nabi, his prophets, send the prophets, Yisrael Yah, your Nabi. Shall proclaim his word unto us, Israel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the heart of Pharaoh was hardened. Neither will he let the children of Israel go as Yahweh has spoken by Moshe. Let us move on to chapter 10, verse 1. Chapter 10, verse 1. Still concerning Pharaoh. Exodus of chapter 10, verse 1. And Yahweh said unto Moshe, Go unto Pharaoh. He said, For I. Is that what it says in Israel? Yes. Is that what it says in your scripture, in your Torah? Yes. He says, For I have hardened his heart. You're not, you don't want Yahweh to harden your heart, Israel. Yeah. Because when the heart is hardened, it is not pliable for the mishvah or the planting of the seed of Almighty Yahweh into the lab or into the mind. There's no revelation, there's no life that can be brought forth from a lab or a heart that is hard in Israel. That's the truth. He said, for I, I, Yahweh, have hardened his lab, his heart, and the heart of his servants. Why? He said that I may show these my signs, my works. Yes. Yeah. He, did not he say in the beginning, Israel, that he should bring Mizraim out with a mighty hand yeah. by works, by mercy, and by truth? Yeah. That I might show these signs before them. Verse 2. And that, you, and that you may tell in the ears of your sons, do we have sons in here, Israel? Yes. And of your sons' sons, yes, yes. what things I wrought or have done in Mizraim, and my signs which I have done among them, that you may know, that you may know how, that I, that you may know now that I am Almighty Yahweh. Oh, yeah. Do we teach that to our children? Yes, yes right, y'all. It's commanded that we teach. The Mishvah, the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. What Yahweh has done. Not only what it speaks in Torah, but sharing experiences even in our own lives, Yisrael. Yeah. It's important that we speak to our children. That we take time to explain things to them. It's important. Yahweh has commanded that, Yisrael. Yeah. He has commanded that. Why? That they may understand what Yahweh does. 
why Yahweh permits certain things. The plan of Almighty Yahweh. The Dabar of Almighty Yahweh. And what he expects from us as being the parents and what he expects as them being little children, Israel. Isn't that beautiful, Israel? Don't you want to share the richness of your possession with your children? People do it all the time. They leave wealth, money, whatever they think is value, land. What do we have to offer unto our children? We have the Mishpah. We have the Torah, which is of great wealth. We have a wisdom and an understanding as being Zarkain, as experiencing certain things, Israel. So we must explain things to our children so that our children won't be timid or afraid to come, uh, to come to us with certain questions, Israel. We must be able to answer the children. Does not Yahweh answer us? Does this Torah answer all our questions? And in some things we may not understand at this time. But Yahweh shall reveal Yisrael. Why? Because he'll hover us much. He cares for us. That's why he takes us through the fire. That's why he puts the rod to our backside, Yisrael. Hallelujah. And we need that. Let us just step back a little bit in the Torah. Hallelujah, Yahweh. Because Yahweh, he didn't send his judgment to Mizraim, like I said, without letting Moshe know. Without letting the Nabi know, the leader. I want to turn to Isaiah chapter 43, verse 15. Hallelujah. Then we will move back a little to Exodus. But I want to read this, Yisrael. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 15. Yahweh, he's not going to hide things from us, Israel. He shall reveal what we need to know in due season. Hallelujah. He says in Isaiah 43, verse 15, he says, I am Yahweh, your Kodesh one, I am set apart. I'm not like any other. I am Ekod, I am one. I am Yahweh, your Kodesh one, the creator of Yisrael, your king. Thus saith Yahweh, which makes a way in the sea. Did he not make a way in the sea for Yisrael? When it seemed like the waters were impassable, Yisrael. And many times we come to the waters that seem impassable. But yet, by the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, he makes a way, he makes a path. And a path in the mighty waters which bring forth the chariots and the horses, the army and the power. Is it not Yahweh that established the chariots? Is it not Yahweh that established the powers that be Yisrael? He said, they shall lie down together, and they shall not rise. They are at stake. They are quenched as flax rope. So they are brought low, Yisrael. The armies of this nation... The world that depends on its armament or its soldiers or its military power, yes. Yahweh should bring it all down. Yeah. All down, Yisrael. Yes. There's no weapon that is formed against us that shall prosper. Verse 18. He says, remember you not the former things. Yes. Don't sometimes we go back, Yisrael. Yes. He says, remember you not the former things. Why? He said, because I have something that is much greater than what you have experienced set before you, Israel." He said, remember you not the former things, neither consider the things of old. He said, behold, look, observe, pay attention. He said, behold, I will do a new thing. Did not he do a new thing in Mizraim when he rained down the fire and the hell and the brimstone? He says, now shall it spring forth. Shall he bring anything upon us or upon this nation that we shall not be aware of, Yisrael? No, he's going to forewarn us. He's going to allow us time for preparation. We should be making preparation, Yisrael. Preparation for the coming of Yahshua HaMashiach. Preparation for his feast days. Hallelujah. Preparation for his Shabbat. 
He says, now it shall spring forth. He says, shall you not know it? Shall you not be informed? He said, I will even make a way in the wilderness. Did he not make a way in Mizraim? Were not Israel, Yah, in the land of Gosha, a safe place under the shadow of Almighty Yahweh's wings? He said, I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Do we believe Yahweh does that for us, Israel, Yah? Every day he does that. Every breath you take, he does that. Every step you make, he does that for you, Yisrael. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's not of our own power or our own might or our own intellect that we are preserved or that we have even come this far, Yisrael. Yeah. But it's by the ish, it is by the fire, the fire of Almighty Yahweh. Have we come this far by Emunah, moon, Yisrael? Yeah. Has he failed us? Are we disgruntled? Are we murmuring? Oh my, don't you know what Yahweh, Yahweh he has a, a, a fix for that, Yisrael? What is that? The same fire that consumed Israel, the same judgment, the same Torah, the same ish. Hallelujah, and I will get to that. Let's not allow ourselves to be disgruntled because we think things are not going our way. It should go Yah's way. And whatever way Yah lead, we should follow. Is he not the tough shepherd? Yeah. Is not Yahshua the tough shepherd? Yeah. He knows how to lead the sheep, does he not? He knows what pastures that we need to graze in. He knows what type of herb is suitable for a sheep or a lamb that may be sick. He knows what it takes them to graze. He knows what to lead us, Yisrael. Yes. Even if it means taking us into a furnace. But sure as he takes us in, he shall bring us out, Yisrael. It's for our own tub. That's why he does that. That's his ahava. That's his, his um, Torah and his mishpah. That's his commandment, Israel. Hallelujah. Exodus chapter 6, verse 1. Going back to Exodus. Chapter 6, verse 1. Yahweh's not going to allow anything to happen that we should not be aware of, Israel. Yeah. He should let us know how, by his mishpah, by his nabi. He shall allow the coal or the hail, his voice, his fire, to come down from the Shemayim. And it shall rest upon the lips of his servants, of his nabi. Those that walk in the Torah of Yahweh, those that lead his sheep. Hallelujah. He shall allow his call or his word to enter into their mouths, Israel. Then Yahweh said unto Moshe, Exodus chapter 6, verse 1. He says, Now shall you see what I will do unto Pharaoh. Did I not talk about what Yahweh done to Pharaoh and to Mizraim? For with a strong hand, Shall, shall he let them go? And with a strong hand shall he drive them out of his land. Right. And Yahweh spoke unto Moshe and said to him, I am Yahweh. And I appeared to Abram, to Yitzhak, and to Jacob by El Shaddai. But, but was not known, or Yadad, to them by my name, Yahweh. And I have also established my covenants with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their pilgrimage. Don't you know we're heading to the land of Canaan, to the land of our pilgrimage, New Jerusalem, Israel, wherein they are strangers. Verse 5. And I, I have also heard the groaning of the son of Yisrael, whom the Egyptians keep in bondage. He said, I have zakat, I have remembered my covenant. That's all right. That's all right. Let's brought Yahweh that he has not forgot his covenant, Yisrael. He has made a covenant with us. What is that? 
That, that thing which he has started, he shall finish it, Israel. That the land that he has promised to us, that we shall enter in, that there, there will be nothing that will stop us. Verse 6. Wherefore say to the son of Israel, I am Yahweh, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, of Mizraim. Yahweh should bring us out of these burdens, Israel. Yet but a short while we should endure these pains, these sufferings, these trials, Israel. But Yahweh, he shall bring us out. And when we come out, we should be as pure gold, Israel. And he said, I will rid. What does it take to rid gold? What does it take to rid silver of the impurities? Does not it say, I will rid you? I will take out? He said, I will rid you out of their bondage. What do we allow to bind us today, Israel? What do we allow to keep the praises that Yahweh is so worthy of to come forth out of our left? You know, if there are not praises that abide in the left, then none will come out. None will come out, Israel. What do we have in our hearts tonight, Israel? Don't you know Yahweh has given us much? We are without excuse not to uplift his name, to exalt his name, to esteem his name, Israel. He said, I will rid you out of their bondage, and I will redeem. Hallelujah. Let the redeemed of Yahweh say so. I am redeemed from the hand of my enemies. Hallelujah. And I'll redeem you with a stretched out arm. But you know, Yahweh's arm is not heavy that it cannot reach out, Israel. Or his hand is not heavy that it cannot save, neither is his arm short that he cannot deliver us. He said, I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgments. Great judgments. Great judgments. This is before the deliverance of Israel out of Mizraim. So he spoke unto Moshe, and Moshe spoke unto the house. What? These things that I've just read. I hope I didn't leave you on the dark in that one, Israel. Exodus chapter 6, this is before what I had just read concerning the fire of Almighty Yahweh. So he spoke unto Moshe. He let him know, and Moshe let Israel know that even though we're in bondage now, Yahweh shall deliver us. How? By great works. Has not Yahweh delivered you by great work, Israel? With an outstretched arm, he reached his arm down into a pit. He pulled me out of a very deep pit. Hallelujah. I did not know where I was. I did not know how to get out. But he reached way down, Israel. And he picked me out of the mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Yahweh, he didn't allow Moshe to be in the dark about what he was about to do in Mizraim. Yisrael was not in the dark. They knew perfectly what Yahweh was doing. Yeah. Moshe knew perfectly what Yahweh was doing. Why? Because he spoke to him before time and let him know that he shall deliver. Let me read that again in chapter 6 of Exodus chapter 6. Wherefore I say to the sons of Israel, I am Yahweh. He didn't say, I am Yahweh. Did he not say, I am your king? I am your deliverer. I have created you. I have made you. You are mine. He said, I am Yahweh, and I will bring you from under the burdens of Egypt, Egypt, Mizraim. And I will rid you out of their bondage. He said, and I will redeem you with a stretched out arm. Hallelujah. And with great, great judgments. Was not the fire and the brimstone the judgments of Almighty Yahweh? Did he not rain down judgment? Yes, right, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need the reigning of Yahweh, his ruah upon Israel tonight. Hallelujah. Allow your ruah to move upon us, Yah. Let's move on to Debrian. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 1. Hallelujah. I'm not going to be before you long tonight, Israel. Hallelujah. If I have much more concerning this, 
Hallelujah. Concerning the fire. Yahweh dividing the flames of fire. Hallelujah. And even the coals being the very breath. When he breathes, this fire, Yisrael, damn the dragons. Fire breathing dragons. When, when, when Yah speaks, there's nothing left standing. Nothing's left standing. Everything's consumed. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 1. Now, therefore, at this time, are we in the now, Yisrael? Now, therefore, hearken. We must hearken. We must take heed to who? Our neighbor? Should we take heed to just what's going on around us? He says, now, therefore, hearken, O Yisrael, to the statutes and to the judgments which I teach you. Why? For to do them. To do them, Yisrael. It's not for us just to hear what has been spoken tonight, what has been spoken, Yisrael. But we should hide it in our lips. We should guard it, Yisrael, his Torah, so that we may do them, that we may bring them out to their full fruition, Yisrael, execute them, complete them, his Torah, for to do them, that you may what? Live. That you might have the high of Almighty Yah. The light of Almighty Yahweh. Don't you know there's nothing that can live without the light? It must take light. Even the creatures that abide in the darkness, it still takes the light that they may live, Yisrael. It takes the life. It takes the light of Almighty Yah. And go in and possess the land which Yahweh, your sovereign ruler of your avas, he gives unto you. Talking about the covenant still, Yisrael. You shall not add to the word which I command you, neither shall you diminish anything from it. That you may keep the commandments of Almighty Yahweh, your Almighty, which I command you. Verse 3. He said, your eyes have seen what Yahweh did because of Belporah. For all the men that followed Belporah, Yahweh your Almighty One, has destroyed them from among you. Who was Belporah? Well, he was a wicked king. Which his armies pursued after Yisrael to destroy them. Just as Pharaoh tried to destroy Yisrael. Verse 4. He said, but, but you that did cleave to Yahweh. Are we cleaving to Yahweh tonight, Israel? Are we holding fast unto Abaliah? But you that cleave to Yahweh, your Almighty, are alive, every one of you, even this day. We have not been overcome. Pharaoh has not overcome us. The world cannot overcome us. Neither can the spirit of Belporah, his armies. There's nothing this world can do, Yisrael, as long as we have Yahshua on our side. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, verse 5, even as Yahweh my Abba have commanded me that you should do so in the land where you should go and possess it. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of all nations. But you know we're being watched, Israel. We're being observed. Whether you realize it or not, we're being observed. We're being watched. So we should be a people or a nation that's full of wisdom, full of understanding. Why? That the nations may seek counsel. Our counsel. The counsel of Almighty Yahweh. That's what he's saying right here. Which shall hear all these statues and say, surely this great nation is a wise and an understanding people. For what nation is there that is so great that has a sovereign ruler so near unto them? Don't you know Yah is so near unto us, Yisrael? Yeah. Even in our lab, even in our mind. Don't you know he has written his Mishpah, his Torah, in our lives, Yisrael? His fire, his ish that drives us, that keeps us moving. Fire keeps you moving. You're not going to rest in the fire. You're going to get out of it, Yisrael. Hallelujah. So should the word of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. 
For what nation is so great who has a sovereign ruler so near unto them as Yahweh, our Abba, is in all things that we call upon him for? Don't we call upon him for all things? Is it all things that we call upon him for, Yisrael? All things. He provides everything to us, Yisrael. All that we need. Verse 8. And what nation is this so great that the statutes and the judgments so sadiq or so righteous as all this Torah which is set before you this day? All together, be on your guard. We must be on our guard as being valiant warriors of Almighty Yahweh. We must always be on our guard. We can't let our guards down, Israel. And, diligent, and diligently watch your nephesh, your soul, lest you forget the things which your eyes have seen. What have our eyes seen, Israel? The deliverance of Almighty Yahweh. Has it not brought us out of Mizraim? Has it not brought us forward? Come on, Israel. With a mighty, outstretched arm, deliverance. Unless they depart from your left all the days of your life. But again, teach them to your sons. And to your sons' sons. Why is that so important, Israel? That we must ingrain the misfah and the lairs of our children. The feast days, the Shabbats. We must teach them. We must make it an enjoyable and an exciting thing, Israel, that they may carry on. That those of us that, that may not see what even our children see. Hallelujah. If Yahweh so willing tarries, Israel. So there must be those that take this torch on. So it's important that we be an example to our children. And it, it's not just the bane, but it's young art like myself. It's important that the Zakane teach. That they show us the way. Hallelujah. Many times when it's the Torah talks about children, we just think about the little ones in our arms. Yes. But we are still children, Israel. Oh, yeah. yes. Yahweh is still feeding us the breast milk. Yes. He is still bringing us up, Israel. Yes. Hallelujah. Verse 10. He says, especially the day that you stood before Yahweh, your Almighty, and her, when Yahweh said to me, Gather me the people together, and I will make them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the Olam, upon the earth, and that they may teach their children. And you come, and you came near and stood under the mountain. As I bring this to a close, Israel, what is the mountain that we are under, Israel, that we are standing around? We're not, Israel, y'all, did not come to a mountain to hear the Torah of the Mishvah spoken by Moshe, through, through Moshe from Almighty Yahweh. And yet upon that mountain was the ish of Almighty Yahweh, his breath. That's what set the mountains on fire. And you came near and stood under the mount. And the mountain burned with fire, with ish. To the midst of the Shemayims, the breath of Yahweh was upon the mountain. The life of Yahweh is upon the mountain. The midst of the Shemayim, with darkness, the clouds, and with thick darkness. And Yahweh, he spake to you out of the midst of the ish, out of the midst of the fire, Yisrael. That's the only way Yahweh is going to speak to us, Yisrael. It's by his fire, by his coals, by his judgment. That it may consume everything that is not of Almighty Yahweh. And Yahweh spoke to you out of the midst of the fire. And you heard the voice of the words. But saw no simpler to, similar to. Only you heard a voice. Do we hear the voice of Almighty Yahweh tonight, Israel? He speaks to us by his ish. His word, his breath. Is a breath of fire that shall consume, and it does consume, but it will not consume the house of Yisrael. Why? Because we are his chosen. Did the fire consume Shadrach and Meshach at the furnace? No, it did not. But it consumed the soldiers, the warriors that were not of the Ruah HaKodesh. Did it not? So not only does Yahweh 
Use the fire to destroy, to burn up, to consume, but he used it to preserve his people. Hallelujah. And Yahweh shall keep us, Israel. Hallelujah. There's nothing that shall happen that we should not be aware of, that we should not be ready for. Because he has provided all that we need in Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. Isn't that beautiful, Yisrael? Hallelujah. Send your fire, Almighty Yahweh. Allow the coal from the Shemayim to fall upon the mouth of Yisrael. Why? That we may speak fire. That we may speak the truth, Yisrael. That the dross may be consumed. Hallelujah. I pray this message has been an inspiration to your love. And I will continue, Yisrael. I got some more on that because we have not even got to Sodom and Gomorrah yet. Hallelujah. And there's another city, too, that I shall speak about concerning the judgments of Almighty Yah. Did the fire fall only upon Sodom and Gomorrah? Hallelujah. Why did it fall, fall upon Sodom and Gomorrah? Well, Yahweh judges people in the same fashion if we do not walk according to his statutes or his mishfah. We will continue. Let us stand to our feet, Israel. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. For Yahweh, he is tough. For his mercy, it endures forever. Hallelujah. Almighty yeah. Yahweh, we do Baraki for this beautiful day that you have made, Abba Yahweh. Every day is beautiful. Why? Because you have made it and you have allowed us to breathe the breath of your ish, of your life, Abba Yahweh. We do Baraki for all things. Everything, Abba Yahweh. We do not complain. We're not murmuring. Hallelujah. But we do give you toda and everything. We do ask, Yahweh, that you will count around those that have come from near and afar. That your melican will be counted around them, those that are listening. And keep us, Yahweh. And give those that have labored today rest. You say you give your beloved rest, Yahweh. And we do need rest in this hour. So restore us and renew us tonight. And in the morning we shall arise and we shall barack you with the breath that you have breathed into us. And all things we do barack you. In the mighty and precious name of Yahshua HaMashiach we do declare. Hallelujah. 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 Yahweh. Yah Barak Ko Yisrael. Hallelujah.